Have you heard about Marvel's Midnight Suns getting exciting new characters added to its roster? We've got you covered. The latest look at the life of P shows more similarities between Bloodborne, but is that a bad thing? We're getting into the new expansion that's scheduled to be added to Towers of Fantasy. And you know what? Settle in, there's much more to cover. Let's go. But first, we have Marvel's Midnight Suns gets exciting new character added to roster. The upcoming tactical RPG developed by Ferrix's Games, Marvel's Midnight Suns has just added Scarlet Witch to its roster. The game will feature popular comic book characters collected from multiple of Marvel IPs like The Avengers, X-Men, Runaways, and Midnight Suns. Marvel's Midnight Suns will see iconic antagonist pairings as well as the twists that are unique to the game's own canon, making it highly unpredictable, which is exactly what makes this game so very interesting and it shows in the presentation of the addition of Scarlet Witch. Her character was announced together with Spider-Man, but it's what was shared about her specifically that has her set up firmly apart from the other playable characters, as far as we know right now. At some point during the gameplay of Marvel's Midnight Suns, Scarlet Witch will get corrupted by Lilith and her part in the original narrative looks significant, guessing from the cutscenes that previously showcased her. But she is playable, which suggests that she will be up until she gets corrupted, or whether she only gets playable once saved from the corruption. Either way, it's interesting to see how this will play out in Marvel's Midnight Suns. Again, the game has its own canon and doesn't have the restrictions of other source material, giving a freedom of creativity that will surprise long-term fans and newcomers alike. Are you ready for Marvel's Midnight Suns? Next up, latest look at Life of P reveals more similarities between Bloodborne. That Life of P has taken a lot of inspiration from software's Bloodborne, was noticed by many fans from the moment it was announced in 2021, and now we've seen the newest trailer for Life of P which shows off an in-games visual and combat. It seems like we weren't wrong to make comparisons and and the new dark fantasy game is definitely adopting some features from Bloodborne. Life of P is an action RPG Souls-like game in development by NeoWiz and its subsidiary Round 8 Studio, and the expectations are high, and they have only risen more with the amazing new footage we've seen of the game. Life of P is a dramatic retelling of the classic story of Pinocchio, where you get to control Pinocchio, challenged with finding his creator Geppetto. The game takes place in the fictional city of Krat, which takes its inspiration from the Belle Ecope era in Europe, a time of much prosperity in France, right before the devastation that was the First World War. But Life of Peace seems to have added a dark fantasy twist, and the city has been decimated to be inhabited by deranged machines. The description of Life of Peace promises multiple different quest lines and endings, much like fans of the Souls games are familiar with and excited about. Overall, Life of Peace is looking very promising, similarities to the side, or do you have a different opinion and wish the new game didn't look so much like Bloodborne? Following Vera expansion for Tower of Fantasy has been revealed. Hada Studios has announced that Tower of Fantasies is getting a new update that will take players to the cyberpunk-themed city of Mororia. Tower of Fantasy is a pretty new MMORPG that uses gotcha mechanics like Jensen Impact, but Tower of Fantasy stands out because it offers some unique differences which have earned the newcomer over 10 million downloads since its release, only a month earlier. That's a very promising number, especially for a new game. Tower of Fantasy takes place on Ada, another planet hundreds of light years in the future where humanity found its escape from the crumbling environments of Earth. Ada gives players a large, open world to explore and settle down in. It was announced as GamesCon that the map of Tower of Fantasy would be expanded with an expansion later this year, and the new trailer has given everyone a little peek and and what can be expected from said expansion. A whole lot it seems. New environments, mounts, weapons, monsters, and much more. The update will take place in the fall and will be accompanied by a new playable character, Frigg, as well. And don't worry, the update will be available for free to all players. Wait up, we've got more to come. Supermassive Games has actually revealed the release date of the Dark Pictures anthology, The Devil in Me. There's an impressive new gameplay trailer for the first Descendant and the price of the Hogwarts Legacy Collector's Edition has been revealed. Want to find out more? Make sure to stick around until the end of the video to get all up to speed. First up, the release date for the Dark Pictures The Devil in Me has been released. Supermassive
Massive Games have given fans a release date for the Dark Pictures anthology The Devil and Me, alongside a brand new trailer to show off some of the new features that will be included in the new game, which is scheduled to be released on October 18, 2022. Super Massive Games is known for some of the most legendary immersive choice-based horror games like Until Dawn, which was the studio's breakout game. Fans can expect that the trusted formula of Super Massive Games will be present in the Dark Pictures anthology The Devil and Me as well, but has also puts more pressure on the expectations we have for the new game. The Devil in Me will be the last installment of the set of stories that was started in 2019's Man of Madon, but the studio has already announced that they already have five more games lined up in the Dark Pictures anthology. In this final part of the first chapter, the player is given control over multiple characters who are all part of an entertainment show that is tanked pretty badly in its ratings. In an attempt to attract more viewers, we find that the cast has accepted a weird invitation to a so-called murder cast. Once there, things are exactly as one would expect them to be, and when responding to an invite to a murder castle, but you still won't see the end coming. Are you excited to see how this story will find its end? Following, The First Descendant has released an impressive new gameplay trailer. The upcoming free-to-play shooter style game The First Descendant has showcased a new trailer. Incidentally, it's also the trailer that kicked off GamesCon, and it was a great one to set the tone for all things exciting that are coming. The new trailer for The First Descendant showcased the power of Unreal Engine 5, and the overall reception has been positive. The teaser trailer for the new game, which is being developed by Nexon, was shown ahead of GamesCon, and there was noted how the game was possibly inspired by Destiny and Anthem. Once the second look was given, this notion was solidified by the presented gameplay which appears to have similarity to those games, but with a surprising twist that seems to put more focus on cooperative play. The Unreal Engine 5 also delivered impressive graphics in the first Ascendant to the point that it even seemed to represent a final product. With an open beta maybe even already on the horizon, the only worry left really are the microtransactions, which could throw a wrench in the future of free-to-play live service games games, but even those seem to have mostly quelled with the exciting new trailer. Have you seen it? And now, Hogwarts Legacy Collector's Edition price unveiled. The Hogwarts Legacy Collector's Edition has been revealed, and responses are not in favor for the whole package that has been presented. It all started with Australian retailer EB Games leaking the contents of the Hogwarts Legacy Collector's Edition. In response, Avalanche has confirmed the contents with a Twitter post and an unboxing video of its contents. So what's going to be in this Collector's Edition? Well, everything. You'll get everything included in the game's Hogwarts Legacy Deluxe Edition content, which also offers an exclusive Threstral mount, some magic robes, and 72 hours of early access to the game. But in the Collector's Edition, you'll also get a Steelbook, which console players receiving a physical disc and PC players a digital code, and an impressive wand that sits on top of a magical tome. The whole shebang will be shipped in a Collector's Edition box, which will be emblazoned with the game's logo, and how much would you have to put down to get one of them shipped to your house? Chandler Wood has now confirmed that the Collector's Edition will be $300. And if you're not impressed with it, don't worry, we're not either. Most comments under the video will agree that the price is rather cheap. We wonder whether they may have pushed the price a little too far. And that's it for now. What do you think about the new characters that have been added to the Marvel's Midnight Suns, and what do you think their potential could be under the circumstances? Let us know in the comments what you think, and thanks for watching.